Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Man, I miss mecha games. You see, I've been playing Mech Warrior, Armored Core, Steel Battalion, and Zone of the Enders since I was a kid. And that was a long time ago, but ever since the start of the seventh generation, it seems like mecha has just been on a decline. There are a lot of mecha in games, sure but I can't find too many games that are entirely designed around these mecha from the ground up. One franchise that always had, though, was Mech Warrior. Like I said, I've been playing Mech Warrior since I was a kid, but the last true Mech Warrior that I remember playing, at least, launched in the early 2000s. Now, I say true Mech Warrior because the Mech Warrior games nowadays just fail to live up to their predecessors. And hopefully, hopefully, the way this video comes across is the way that I intend it to. I'm not going to bash or throw stones unnecessarily, but I'm going to be honest about my feelings towards two games in particular and what I think they mean for the mecha genre. Mech Warrior Online and Hawken are the two games that I'm going to be covering here, and this isn't really a mechanical overview, or a review even, but rather just my thoughts on them in a very general sense. Just as a prelude to both of these, both of these games are free to play. Obviously, I wanted to make this video more for MechWarrior Online, and that's where I'm going to start. I've been following this game since its original announcement back in 2009. Announcing it was this absolutely sick trailer for it that made the game look like it was going to be MechWarrior 5. What we got, though, really failed to bring the full potential of the trailer to bear. And ever since its launch, MWO never really took itself up to that level. It's almost like they had all these plans for this killer game, and they just caught the free-to-play bug mid-development, and the rest was downhill from there. Now let me just slow down for a minute, because this is going to require a bit of setup. MechWarrior Online is part of the Battletech universe. Battletech is a science fiction world set in the new millennium that spans a massive amount of colonized planets in the galaxy. And each of these planets are different from one another. So you're always going to be in new places, doing new things on new worlds, and the universe, it feels big. And that's really the setting for the story. It's a huge war that stretches from planet to planet. And you get around, and you do all the fighting, in battle mechs. There are these huge heaps of metal. And they're all unique. They have different technologies, different weapon systems, different designs. Like, this war has been going on for so long that advancements in technology keep pushing mechs further and further on in complexity. This is the first battle mech ever created. This is Mackie. But after a few hundred years, we start seeing stuff like mad dogs, dire wolves, mad cats that look completely different. And this is a really cool element to the universe. Things keep changing and evolving and advancing the playing field. And I feel like that element of change and evolution is really at the center of the mecha genre. Whether you're allowed to change the chassis, the weapon systems, your boosting, your armor, in mecha, you're supposed to make changes to your mech. And as the pilot, you get to play those differences. And that's really important to me. And likewise, it's really important for Mech Warrior. You see, in Mech Warrior, there are spreadsheets and just tons of variables that you could construct out of all of the different types of stuff that you can modify and equip. Starting from the top, the very basics, there are four weight classes of mech. You've got light mechs, medium mechs, heavy mechs, and assault mechs in ascending order of tonnage. From there, each category within itself has different chassis with different specialties to them. Some could be more well suited to scouting, others are frontline skirmishers, others are long range missile boats. The specialization, all of it, comes from your mech lab where you use the hardpoint system. Now, hardpoints are unique to later installments in the Mech Warrior game series. The way you handle it in the actual board game that it's based on is way different, it's way more open, but basically, Basically, hard points are mounts for your weapons, but they're specific to a weapon type. You can't put a laser weapon on a missile hard point, but that still gives you access to the entire catalog of missile weapons, and that is a big difference, and there are big differences between these different types of weapons. And that alone would give you a lot to consider, but that's not even half of it. You also have to factor in space for your heat sinks, your ammo, your modules, and your criticals. Shit that you can't neglect, but that's also customizable in its own right. 
You can even decide the type and quantity of armor that you want to have placed on a specific part of the chassis. Basically, as long as you can fit these builds within your budget of tonnage or weight, you can go nuts, you can do whatever you want. And that stuff actually matters too. MechWarrior is a much slower game than others in the genre. Battle mechs are much more like uh, bipedal tanks than orbital frames, and that means that each decision you make could leave you open for several seconds. And these uh, mechs, they aren't small or slender, so attacks are much more likely to connect, so you do have to be careful with your builds. And with this experimentation and fine-tuning, you can really start to feel like you own your mech. You are the pilot of this battle mech. You amassed the funds for it. You outfitted it with your favorite weapons. Those are your decisions. And of course, when you're all done, you can give it a custom paint job to really finalize it as your mech. And just myself personally, I've always had a habit of making all of my mechs a purple camouflage. Every time, without fail, it doesn't matter what it is or where I am, it's going to be purple. That's just me. And that is honestly all the background that I can really give for Mech Warrior. On the other side of things sits Hawken, and it's a much more straightforward game. First off, you still buy your mechs, but the weight classes are condensed down to three instead of four. You still buy weapons, but you really only choose your primary and secondary weapons, almost like a military shooter. And you've got some modules and items to choose from, and that's really where your customization ends. You're given a lot less to change, but even then, that still gives you a lot of wiggle room. And you can use that to make your own setup. It's very streamlined and focused, and this is reflected in the gameplay. Boosting is much more like sprinting and dashing, so mechs reposition themselves very rapidly, you know, often. And a lot of intensive decision-making comes with the projectile explosives like the tow launcher that's basically the rocket launcher from Quake. You can also heal yourself in the middle of a match, so you're never really at a loss for health between fights. The mechs also have their own special abilities that help flesh them out and distinguish each other. Some can shoot while boosting with their powers. Others get damage increases. Others have instant heat sinks. It all depends on what you choose, really, and what you find fun. And just as it should, your options don't stop with your build. It extends to how you look as well. Hawken is a pretty cool game to look at because the mechs all look like junkyard scrapped duct taped together. So you have these used car looking beater mechs just skating around trying to land direct hits on each other. And it's a lot of fun, but in a different way than a simulator simulator mech warrior. So you have two very different types of mecha games that do very different types of things. But the issue here isn't really the gameplay per se, but rather it's the payment method that they share. And this also has to do with how that payment method changes the gameplay and the fundamentals of both. You see, I spent a lot of that time up until now setting things up so that you could hopefully see where I was coming from when I say that these games, and perhaps this genre as a whole, is way too easily exploited by free-to-play markets. In the ones that I have played at least, free-to-play games thrive by quantity rather than quality. They sell you a lot of little things that may look small when taken on their own, but they add up to insane amounts of both time and money when you try to get access to everything. A problem that I'm willing to bet you wouldn't have with other payment methods. You see, they call them microtransactions, but I cannot, for the life of me, figure out what is at all micro about this. This is a golden mech, valued at $500. That's not an MC, that is straight USD. $500, that's enough for 10 copies of Yoshi's Woolly World. That's enough money for a PS4, and all the games on the PS4 worth owning. So, it's just a PS4, but hey, still leaves you with enough money for three whole copies of Woolly World. But, what's bundled with that $500 golden skin is the Masakari Collection, a $240 bundle of 24 total mechs, and no, that is not a good value at all. You know, even when you think about it, that's $10 per mech. But considering how you would have been able to earn those mechs for a much smaller amount of time and money in a standard $60 game, thats it's just a joke. Now, if you're saying that this isn't a standard value for things, I would agree. You're not dropping hundreds for every skin and mech, 
but bear in mind that mechs are still sold for a pretty ridiculous amount on average. What is standard operation, though, is stuff like this. A Direwolf DWFS variant assault mech, going for 6,950 mech credits. That might not sound that bad, until you do the conversion and you're left with a $35 price tag for one mech. If I wanted all the Arctic Cheetahs, $49.95. If I want any of the Champion variants or Hero variants that can only, only be acquired through real money transactions. And just for the sake of argument, I tallied up the total cost of all battle mechs that had no C-bill sign for purchase in the store, and that came out to a total of 224,995 MC, or roughly $899.98. Once again, that is in USD. These champion and hero variants are unique variants with unique hard points, unique configurations, unique aesthetics that those of regular battle mechs just don't have. Bearing in mind that this is not accounting for any camo, any color, any boosters, or even those gold skins, this is completely within the purchasing of mechs that you cannot get through in-game actions. But what about those in-game actions? You see, this is another sticking point of the business model. In-game currency takes an embarrassingly long amount of time to accrue. Now, I'm fine with having to earn my dosh in order to spend it, but the business model thrives by setting you up to cave in after a fashion. The sheer amount of time spent is going to start outweighing the value of your money. You're going to spend a lot of time with those trial mechs, saving up to buy your own battle mech that you haven't piloted yet just so you can spend even more in-game currency to give it a unique loadout, which is going to take you a while to get the way you want it, which is going to tear you between saving up for a new chassis or going all in on your current one for a while until you exhaust every option. But even the amount of time it'll take you to experiment with the configuration will be a lot less than the amount of time it will take you to get more in-game currency to start the process over again. Now, sure, it isn't all bad. Weapons and modules are universal, but regardless, as you expand into other variants and weight classes, you'll want to get additional copies of each weapon type in order to experiment with things. And like I said, this is a system that is banking on you getting tired of grinding and waiting just so it can get your feet wet with a first purchase. And trust me, the first microtransaction in any free-to-play game is always the hardest to make. After that, things get a lot easier. Hawken does something similar, true, but on a smaller scale. It has this divide for real money and in-game currency microtransactions. They don't cost as much, and there's less to buy, but it still adds up to way more than an upfront payment of $60. But where Hawken tries to snag newer players is with the leveling. Quite a number of internals, items, weapons, and even mechs themselves are locked behind a level barrier that you must meet in order to acquire with in-game currency but the door is never closed if you have real money. If you're on a fresh account and you want a generation to assault mech, you either have to grind out levels or you could just drop some cash. And like I said, this process extends to weapons, items, internals, basically the fundamentals of your build. And both Mech Warrior Online and Hawken try to get you with the cosmetics as well. Now, when I think of a customizable mecha that I'm going to pilot, I don't stop personalizing it at the arsenal, and why should I? As I've said before, this is my mech, and I am its pilot, so naturally I'm going to want to either find or create an appearance that represents me well. There may be 50 other shadow cats on this battlefield, but I am the only one rocking the fabulous purple camouflage. At this point, the way my mecha looks is pretty important to me. Like I said, if I'm going to go as far as to buy the mech for my own in-game efforts, test and equip it with weapons that I earned through the very same, and then name the damn thing, I'm not going to feel complete until I get my purple mech. And developers know this at this point. These skins, these body parts and paint jobs are treated as non-essential items, but sold anyway. Not because they think people don't care about it either way, but because they know that people want to go all out in how their personal mech looks. And see, 
It's not like they're helping you trim the fat or keeping it about the gameplay by giving you one incredibly stale color palette and teasing all these really stylish alternatives just so you wouldn't buy them. It's not giving you choices, it's not giving you options, it's just an excuse to take the cherry and the whipped cream away from your robot milkshake until you cave and buy that separately too. If I wanted a purple camoed mech in a proper mech warrior, I just have to go through some menus or do some missions to get what I wanted. Because since I bought the game up front, I have access to everything from the get-go, merely requiring my effort to get it. But in this case, I've got to drop real money for every little color and camo spec that I want. And there's nothing fun or rewarding about that to me. And this free-to-play gig really messes with the progression curve of both games too. This is largely due to various barriers of getting access to things, whether it's the in-game currency, your level, or a real money paywall, whether it's all three, something is going to be blockading you from getting access to stuff. But regardless, if you theoretically were to start two players off with new accounts at exactly the same time, the player capable of spending more money is going to begin to vastly outpace and outmatch the freer player, which is likely the point, but if that is the point, then I feel pretty justified in saying that I'm not okay with that. Now, for the record, I'm not sure that I would call the microtransactions in MechWarrior Online or Hawken necessarily pay to win. That is, unless you were only matched up with players who spent the same amount of game time as you. However, Considering just how pivotal and fundamental the modification and personalization is to this genre, it could be argued that this is a pay-to-play setup. If you aren't experimenting and trying new things, you're really missing out on so much of what makes these games unique. Add to all of this the fact that these are multiplayer-only games, and I've got to be honest, multiplayer-only really doesn't do this genre justice. Because having to make your mecha and level design balanced and tailored to a PvP environment really diminishes the gameplay variety, especially that that I've come to love and expect from the mecha genre. For MechWarrior, it's sad to see that the variety of mission objectives, targets, story, and lore all being dropped for deathmatch and control points almost exclusively. Now I get that a lot of players care almost exclusively about the PvP, but I remember when MechWarrior 3 shipped with a similar multiplayer setup that also had a kick-ass campaign as its core experience that was still able to be focused on your funding without tying it to this asinine milking machine free-to-play economy. Your actions during gameplay still had a relevant effect on your resources, repair costs, ammo and the like, but now that's taken a huge shift. And really, all that it makes me think is that I'm happy that I don't have to pay to repair and refuel my mech with in-game currency. And remember what I said about all that story and lore? Completely gone at this point, and why wouldn't it be? It has no bearing on the multiplayer, really. To most players, the lore and story, it's better off as a linear timeline, detailing when new mechs are able to enter the shops. And with the lack of a clear campaign comes a lack of objective variety to incentivize you to switch up your build. Say what you will about them, but the old school missions had you do things like protect a convoy of trucks, destroying bases, destroying dropships, and each of these objectives comes with a different scenario for you to build around and think about. In this case, it's a downgrade to have your targets almost always be other battle mechs. And even though they have the opportunity to really put you in the world of Battletech and make your actions affect the universe with an almost MMO setup, they neglect to do that too. The game's faction system is very bare bones, boiling down to you choosing one of the universe's factions as your own and going into lobbies waiting for attack and defense missions to start, which is basically just regular matchmaking with your faction's logo tied to it. It's way too segmented and it's not very natural at all, and you don't get to wander around and scout out enemy outposts or defend your own naturally. You just do what you always do anyway. But for Hawken, the mechanics and the controls, they really sit well with me, and I believe that they could have really benefited from a more mission-centric level design, wherein player movement, accuracy, and creativity could have been put to the test. Unfortunately, I really don't know much about the universe of Hawken. What I do know, though, is that I would like to know more about it. The only character that I've met in this universe so far is Layla, 
but she seems like a pretty cool character. Strong waifu material. And she definitely gives off the impression that this is a world filled with fun people that could really drive a story if you give them the chance to. To be honest, the only benefit that I see from this free-to-play scheme is that it gives a steady stream of revenue and content to developers and players respectively, but once upon a time we had expansion packs that did the same thing, albeit in a more one-shot manner, but it still gave devs more money and players new stuff to play. And whilst I still have my copies of MechWarrior 4 Vengeance and Mercenaries, when the MWO and Hawkins servers go down, and they will go down, those games are gone forever. It's a common observation, but it's one that no one has found a remedy for as of now. To be honest, both of these games really just signal to me that the mecha genre is in a bit of a bind. It's been years since the last true mech warrior. The team that brought you Armored Core is off milking Souls games. The crew that gave us Zoe is breaking apart before our very eyes. Steel Battalion. It became a shitty Kinect game, and I have no idea how we got to this point. I can't tell you why games about giant robots fighting other giant robots on alien planets isn't just flying off of every shelf. Whether it could be linked to the rise of the military shooter, publisher issues, or just a general loss of interest, the pool of new mecha titles is drying up fast. And a new alternative is really welcome now, because a lot of advancements in tech have been made in the past few years. New engines are capable of new and complex physics systems and environmental destruction that could bring a new layer of depth to urban environments. AI complexity is improved, scripted events have improved, technology, period, has improved. And on top of all of this, developers have a lot more experience now than they did a few years ago when it comes to making games. So now of all times would be perfect for a whole host of new and old franchises to take the center stage. And sure, it's nice to see Xenoblade Chronicles X with its dolls, but like I said, Alternatives are incredibly sparse. It's also really sad to see Battletech resort to both free-to-play and crowdfunding, just to continue things at all. I mean, hopefully if either game continues to rake in cash, then we might see a return to form eventually, but for some reason I doubt it. However, just to clarify, I have nothing against free-to-play multiplayer-only games. Quite the opposite, actually. Let them tear it up for all I care, so long as they have games that are good alternatives for me to partake in in the interim. And for the record, I have absolutely nothing against giving a developer money for a product, but I'd much rather have a singular, guaranteed payment up front, rather than having to practically contribute an endless amount of money and time to something just so I can have access to everything. And ultimately, I'm just not really digging hard on competitive multiplayer as of late, so for a while at least, I'm gonna have to go without piloting a giant robot, and that's pretty sad. Either way, I keep hoping that with each new press conference, some company is just gonna walk on stage and blow everyone completely out of the water with a whole new game. And hell, for all I know, that could happen tomorrow. But for right now, I think I'm just gonna have to sit around and wait for someone, anyone, to pick up the tab. My name is Vash TSB, and I'll see you guys soon. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out this video that I made. <laughs> I know I don't make them often enough. Big thanks to everyone that I stole Armored Core and Steel Battalion footage from, and a huge shoutout goes to Hyperbit Hero for sending me some of his Zone of the Enders gameplay. This video really wouldn't have been the same without his help and encouragement, and hey, if you want to see more mecha, I remember hearing something about a video he did not too long ago about Zone of the Enders 2, the second runner. So uh, click here to check that out. See you guys soon.